Well, you've spoken a number of times. Uh, you, you've returned to the theme of the decline of wages, the decline of the prospects for this generation versus the last. And you mentioned also the decline of unions. They all seem to be connected together. Oh, they are. They are. Um, in the decades after World War II, for the one and only time in American history, uh, there are two parallel lines marking the rise of productivity and marking the rise of medium, median uh, household income. Uh, from 1947 through 1972, they each go up by 102 percent. Uh, household income doubles for the average American in real terms, not just inflation added terms, and productivity doubles. What this means is the gains that American companies are making are shared with their workers. Uh, this, not coincidentally, is the time in American history when union representation is at its highest. Uh, gains that companies make are not automatically shared with their workers. They're not shared with their workers at all unless there's some compelling reason to, like you have a workforce that is so highly talented and afraid you're going to lose them that they're going to go elsewhere. That's why professional athletes and airline pilots do very well. Uh, but there are only so many positions for professional athletes and airline pilots. And even airline pilot wages have gone down, except in the, the very high end of cross-ocean travel. Uh, uh, or they're shared because there's a union there that sees to it that they're shared. And unionization uh, in this country peaks in the mid-1950s. Uh, it kind of meanders downward uh, thereafter, uh, so that while the private sector in this country is unionized at a rate of a little over 40 percent in the mid-50s, uh, which is big enough so it affects pay rates all across the country, not just in the 40 percent, but it, it pretty much sets pay and benefit standards in much of the rest of the 60 percent. Uh, when it declines to 7 percent, it, it works the other way around. The pressure of the uh, non-unionized 93% and of workers in China and India and elsewhere battens down the wages of the, uh, of, of the remaining 7% of private sector workers who are unionized today. So we have the reverse phenomenon. Uh, you either, you know, you're leveling up or you're leveling down. Uh, and the deunionization of the American workforce is absolutely a crucial factor. You know, one way to look at this as well, uh, people say, and they say rightly, and I say, that globalization and technology have been factors that have affected workers in the developed world all over the developed world. But only in America have inequality risen to this level and have way benefits in particular so declined, because most benefits in other countries in Europe are provided by the state, uh, not the employer, and have wages gone down so much, even though Europe is just as much affected by globalization and uh, the automation that comes with technology as we are. So something else is different here, and the difference here is uh, the shift in balance in class power has been greater here, and that manifests itself first in the declining level of unionization, and then secondly, in the declining ability of unions to mobilize voters at election time because they're smaller. I mean, that's why the AFL-CIO and, and SEIU have embarked on major programs to put them in touch with working class people who are not union members anymore, because if they just rely on their own base, it's too small to win an election.